Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Thursday, March 3rd, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome, everyone, to this news bulletin. This is part two. Uh, if you're new to my uh, news bulletins, please visit my website at www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I think you'll uh, enjoy checking it out. I post all my videos there along with my YouTube channel, ddarko2012. That's ddarko2012. Um, okay, so we, we left off here with this U.S. service industries grows at fastest pace since 2005 as recovery widens. And then we're going to move on to this now. U.K. service sector slows sharply. Britain's key services sector slowed sharply in February, raising fears that the economy could be too fragile for an interest rate rise. Then federal debt jumps another th uh, $63.7 billion in February even as Treasury drained $158 billion from its cash reserves. So $1.2 trillion, the real U.S. national security budget, no one wants you to know about. If Americans were ever presented with the real bill for the total U.S. national security budget, it would actually add up to more than $1.2 trillion a year. And then moving on here to CNS News, White House suggests $6 billion in cuts in the faces of $1.6 uh, five trillion deficit. White House agrees to six billion more budget cuts with only two weeks to cut the deal. The White House proposed more than six billion in spending cuts Thursday as part of its opening bid in negotiations with congressional Republicans over how to keep the government operating through September 30th and avoid a shutdown. Then we have this from Press TV. Uh, U.S. budget cuts protests gain momentum. U.S. Uh, Social Security workers already have joined the nationwide protest against budget cuts as massive rallies continue in the state of Wisconsin. And then we have this interactive map of the day. Guess which countries match the GDP of U.S. states. And it says here, interesting map from The Economist comparing the GDP and population of countries to the U.S. states. New York is as big as Australia, and troubled Italy is equivalent for California. Expl explore below. And um, the link will be posted. You can check these out, and it has a little graph. And, uh, you know, just to throw it out here, um, you know, each of these states in the beginning of the of our country uh, pretty much were were countries in and of itself. Like each state was their own country, their own sovereign country. And um, basically uh, what we have now is what we're moving into, which is globalism, where each country, each country is almost like a state in the global government. Uh, whereas back when we were confederation of states, each state was a country, and then of course you had the bastard powers that be creating civil wars and do whatever they can to split up uh, a, a really cool place at one time um, and uh, forcing us into nationalism, right? And uh, they were all competing with currencies, and each state or country was competing in currencies. And uh, it was based on localized uh, manufacturing, what they were doing with agriculture and that. And um, so this is what we have now. We're all just uh, a big union, and uh, we have one currency, and eventually we'll have one currency for the entire globe. So uh, moving on here, Portugal plans bond issue buyback. It says here, Portugal's Treasury and Government Debt Agency said that it will buy back some government bonds and issue new debt worth 750 million euros. Then we have this. Is Portugal's treasury down to just four billion? Portugal may be only or may only have four billion euros of the 20 billion it needs to make debt payments in 2011, according to an email from the country's debt management office, seen by Market Watch. And it says here on April 15th, Portugal has a bill of four billion euros to pay on one long-term bond alone. That leaves the country 16 uh, billion euros short to meet other payments in 2011. And words of wisdom coming from our Treasury Secretary, Timothy Geithner, confident U.S. economic recovery can withstand Middle East turmoil. So uh, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner tried to reassure the Senate Thursday about the risk to the U.S. oil supply from political turmoil in the Middle East. He said the international oil production capacity and U.S. oil reserves are adequate to prevent spikes in prices that could potentially devastate the nation's economic recovery from a recession. And this is from the London Telegraph, middle age and middle income struggling most to save. Double the number of middle income and middle aged people are unable to save compared with two years ago. 40% of people aged between 45 and 54 are unable to save anything due to the financial burdens of both elderly parents and young adult children. And then we have the man who plowed into a group of bikers 
is a Brazilian central banker, and he's charged with attempted murder. So, I don't know if you guys caught this, but I covered in my last uh, uh, news bulletin. So, as here, thousands march in India against EU trade deal. Thousands of HIV-positive protesters took to the streets in downtown New Delhi on Wednesday, March 2nd, concerned that an imminent EU-Indiana, or Indiana-India Free Trade Agreement, FTA, will end the production of affordable, life-prolonging drugs. Said the rally more than 2,000 demonstrators from India and Asian countries coincided with the restart of a sensitive trade negotiations in Brussels, with officials suggesting an end to the 2007-initiated uh, talks is in sight, but opponents of the deal say the EU request for a data exclusive exclusivity clause will drive the price of generic drugs made in India above an affordable level for people in poorer countries. More than 80% of the AIDS drugs are medical practitioners used to treat 175,000 people in developing countries are affordable generics from India, said Paul Cawthorn, a spokesman for the Paris based humanitarian uh, group uh, Medicines Sans Frontiers. And so there you go. Uh, next up, U.S. Mexico reached deal to end trucking dispute. Oh, it's a dispute. So this is uh, some North American Union news, right? They're not going to call it the North American Union maybe for another 50 years after everybody's dead in our generation and the old generation's dead. And then people just, you know, basically don't give a crap that there's that their national sovereignty. Well, they don't really have it anymore, right? President Barry Satoro and Mexican President Felipe Calderon unveiled a deal resolving a long-standing dispute over cross-border trucking that has subjected the U.S. to billions of dollars and punitive tariffs. The plan announced at a news conference by those two presidents or dictators or whatever you want to call them, puppets, will allow for half of those tariffs to be lifted immediately. It will establish a reciprocal phased-in pilot program. Ooh, a pilot program. That sounds nice. It says here that allows Mexican trucks to operate inside the United States. Oh, provided they comply with a series of safety driver skills and language tests monitored by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Oh, okay. The U.S. has effectively banned Mexican trucks from crossing the U.S. border after the Teamsters Union and others said the trucks weren't safe. And it says down here, Mr. Calderon has said the U.S. needs to do more to help Mexico win its war on drugs. Among the things he said he wants the U.S. to do is tighten gun laws, right? So, no, I'm sorry. You can go to the devil there, Mr. Uh, Calderon, because this is our right to carry our firearm to defend ourselves if you don't like that. Oh, well. You can, uh, if you want to take the, your guns and, and knives and anything to defend your own citizens from de being able to defend themselves, you go right ahead, but don't tell us what to do. And it says here, work to lower drug use in America. Again, not your freaking business, what people put in their bodies. Neither is it Barry Satoro's, right? So uh, if you legalize drugs, well, you won't have a drug war anymore, and you won't have decapitating heads in your freaking country, right? So it says here, Afghan government tells, oh, yeah, and if we didn't have gun laws in the United States, we wouldn't have all these guns confiscated by the police and then sold to drug cartels in Mexico. Afghan government tells NGOs to pay your taxes. The Ministry of Finance has called on all local and international NGOs to pay their taxes promptly or face legal consequences, including fines and revocation of their operating licenses. Over 2,400 local and international non-governmental organizations are present in Afghanistan, and MOF says all but a few are liable to pay tax. So we're going to keep moving here. So it's here. Uh, investing in education is investing out of crisis, UNESCO chief. At a time when countries are struggling out of a global economic and financial crisis or banker heist, budgets for education should not be cut. Investing in education and is investing out of crisis, a senior UN official told Xinhua in a recent interview. And why is that so important? They're UNESCO, <laughs> right? And uh, it's just like the U.S. Department of Education. It's not their job. It's not their duty or their goal to make your children more intelligent. It is their job to destroy leaders. It is their job to destroy skepticism and questioning authority. And it is their job to produce a bunch of lackadaisical, dumbed down, not even individuals, but collectivists, right? So that's that's why they got to keep education. It's called indoctrinating. They have to be able to indoctrinate young slaves to prepare them for their little serfdom, right? That's the whole point of education is to teaching them what reality is.
because it's not really reality. I don't know what it is. I just, I kind of refer to it as hell here because nothing really makes sense. Everything is the opposite of what you're, of what you're told. So, and that's what, you know, a lot of people refer to as the matrix. You break out of it and you realize that, oh my God, you know, everything, all the authority, all the authorities, all these, um, uh, organizations that, uh, you know, the, the U.S. Dental, so the ADA, American Dental Association, the FDA, and, and the Federal Reserve and all these people, it's all a fraud. It's all corporations uh, handing money to government agencies and departments in order to help them out and screw um, uh, regular people over. So, and then moving on here to California, California cap and trade faces potential hurdle. California's cap and trade program is being threatened by groups of local residents, even after the ambitious climate plan survived an electoral challenge in November. Oh, so it was an electoral challenge. That means that it's uh, legitimate because people voted on it. Okay. Communities for a better environment, California Communities Against Toxics, uh, Society for Positive Action, other groups and individuals have sued state regulators claiming the climate plan won't reduce pollution. Ah! That's because it was never meant to do that, right? The whole cap and trade carbon tax plan is not meant to help pollution. Companies are still going to pollute. It's just going to kill small businesses. That's what it's going to do. And it's going to create a, a, a new tax to fund this and this big NGO, this, these non-governmental organizations, this global government. That's what the carbon tax is. It will go directly to the central banks. The plaintiffs argue that industrial facilities should cut their actual emissions rather than trade rights to pollute. So see, they're, uh, they're wising up. And um, it says here, Republicans ready measure to block EPA carbon rules and legislation that would bar the U.S. EPA uh, from regulating greenhouse gases will be introduced today, according to Republicans, who also have lined up some support from Democrats. Next up, says here, Barber, uh, Obama's policies to drive up energy prices, with price of gasoline rising for the eighth consecutive day. Mississippi Governor Barber accused the Obama administration of hiking energy costs in an effort to promote alternative fuels, right? That's why they're having blackouts down in Texas. And telling people to use less, right? Just like uh, the restructuring of the economy. Work harder, longer, right? You don't retire now until, what, 67, eventually 70, maybe 80 years old, so that you can't collect your pension or your Social Security. You just work and you die like a good little slave. That's what they want. They want good little obedient slaves. And that's why UNESCO need, is calling for education to uh, uh, to not have it, you know, basically be cut. UN climate talks seen missing a uh, plan deadline. A plan by almost 200 countries to step up efforts to cli fight climate change is set to miss a March deadline for starting work on a green fund to help developing nations. No, it's to help redistribute wealth. And there's an individual uh, on the IPCC board, IPCC board, I believe. Yeah, I was just thinking International Panel for Climate Change. And uh, he, one of the individuals actually was quoted as saying, the whole point of the cap and trade system, the carbon tax, is to redistribute wealth. So there you go. Um, says here, EPA chief grilled on safety of hydraulic fracturing. And says here, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, as part of its review of a natural gas drilling procedure, is looking at the radioactivity of wastewater used in the process. The EPA, Lisa Jackson, speaking at a congressional hearing on Thursday, defended her agency's efforts to study the safety of natural gas drilling and left the door open to further regulatory action on the issue. The process known as hydraulic fracturing is used to extract hard-to-reach natural gas pockets in the ground. She suggests that if public water treatment plants don't adequately treat wastewater from hydraulic fracturing to safe levels, a central concern of critics of extraction method, EPA could impose standards on drillers who sent the waste to the plants. EPA can at any time set additional standards for what we call pretreatment. And um, here we go. Uh, next up, politics seen to limit EPA and regulation of natural gas. And um, you can go on here and check this out. Link will be posted. Kind of follow up. Argentinian health workers on strike. Hospital workers in Argentina have gone on a 24-hour strike after the wage increase they had demand, demanded was uh, met less than halfway by the government. Friday protests set to jolt Arab world. 
People in the North, Amer uh, North African and Middle Eastern countries are set to join massive, quote, day of rage protest rallies uh, planned Friday against her unpopular regimes. And this whole day of rage quote, I just think that's kind of like color revolution buzz term created by intelligence agencies that are behind all of this. I mean, it's great that they're kind of protesting for, you know, personal freedom, but I don't think they're going to get democracy. They're going to get a military dictatorship or a fascist dictatorship. And in reality... Uh, they look like they have nicer clothes than me, and they're still getting enough food. Thank you.